Hi, everybody. Just uh, give everyone a moment to join on, and I'll just check that it's all working as well. Fabulous. Looks like it is. I look forward to people joining in a second. Just give everyone a moment. I know it takes a little while for it to come through to Facebook. Um, so, yeah, just give me a minute to join. Yeah, there we go. I think it's working. I'll just give a few minutes for everyone to get on. So I'm super excited for this. It's going to be so good. Um, I'll just give another minute. It's just coming on now. Everyone's joining. If you are already watching, please comment in the um, comment below and let me know that you can hear me. Um, let me know where you're from as well. That'd be really good to know where everyone is from. So if we've just got UK ladies in here today or from all over the world, but wherever you are in the UK as well, like let me know, a little comment below. Um, and yeah, just give me a little thumbs up or heart or something to let me know that you can all hear me and that everything is all good. Um, and we've got a lot to cover today. So I'm gonna try and keep this to 45 minutes. Um, and, but we've got a lot to cover. So I'm super, super excited about everything. Um, spreadsheets and everything. So um, there is a download available for you after this as well. So the link is above this. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube afterwards um, on the replay, then um, it will be on that page somewhere. <laughs> Um, and so basically you can download. So at some point during this training, this masterclass, um, I'm going to be sharing my screen and showing you an Excel spreadsheet that um, I've got available for you to make things so, so much simpler for you to work out your costs and to work out your hourly rates and your profit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can download that. So uh, the link is above and you just basically click on that, pop your email address in, and then it'll get automatically emailed over to you um, within a few minutes of you signing up. So that'll be super, super helpful. Um, so let's just have a look. So who have we got watching? Who's kind of said hi? So hi, uh, Rosanna, Christina, Danielle, she's from Cumbria, hiya, Natty, Rosanna, Tracy, Chris, Michelle, uh, Angela, Kirstine, Chris. Fabulous. That's excellent. So yeah, if anyone joins, um, let me know where you're from. Come and say hi in the comments to us. Um, so for those that don't know me, I know like probably half of you know me and half of you might, I heard, so we had a flurry of people joining the group as well, just as before I went live. So um, for those that don't know me, my name's Jo Tompkins, um, or Joanna, and I run a business called French and Drench, which is a mobile nail business. I've been running that for about four years. Um, lucky enough to win a scratch mobile analyst of the year award a couple of years ago um a finalist again this year i mean um had a column in scratch magazine called success without a shop front which is basically giving business advice to now technicians um i've got a marketing degree i love marketing i love sales um and alongside uh, the mobile nail business that I run, which we grew quite large, so really, really good. And um, I also run this, which is called Nails and Sales. And this is a free Facebook group that helps nail technicians to build their businesses, get fully booked and have confidence. Because so many people struggle with confidence in this industry. And um, it's, it's such a saturated industry and it's quite hard to actually get into a place where you can make money. So um, I really want to help inspire people, make them really feel like that anything is possible with their nail businesses, because it honestly is, and it is for every single one of you, no matter where you are in the world and no matter where your experience is. So I'm super excited to go through this training and this masterclass. So it's our profitable pricing masterclass. Um, it's going to be a 45 minute masterclass. Um, and we're going to be going through um, basically making sure that you are crystal clear on your pricing so that you know um, that you're profitable. Uh, what you need to do if you're not profitable and how much money you make per hour in your business when you're doing treatments because if you don't understand this stuff it can be really <laughs> really stressful um and obviously it's just like the essence of business essentially isn't it and um, so as well as um so one way that we're going to make sure that you are crystal clear is i'm going to go through the spreadsheet which you can then download afterwards so that's one of the things that we're going to be doing going through i um, also going to be giving you um the confidence to put your prices up if you need to um and quite importantly which is a question that a lot of people have is how how do you take into account like your location your experience um you know how you work like whether you work mobile whether you work 
um, you know, in a salon or whether you work from home and how that can affect your price as well. So I really hope by the end of this that you have more confidence in what you are going to charge and that you can take away the Excel sheet and um, and go and in, and go and fill that in basically. So it's probably going to take you a little while, depends on where you are on your pricing stage as to whether you're like, or oh, like starting completely from the beginning and know nothing about your costs or whatever, then it's probably going to take you a couple of hours to get through, like figuring it all out. If you already know a lot of your costs, then it's just going to be a case of inputting the figures in and you'll easily be able to work out what your profit, how much your costs are, um, for each service, how much profit you make off of each service and how much you pay yourself per hour. Um, and the reasons it is so, so important to um, to know your pricing and be really crystal clear on how much profit you're making and how much your, your money you're making per hour, um, because one, it's just the fundamentals of business. Like if you don't know what you're making and you don't even know if you're making any money, you might even be paying yourself minimum wage, um, you know, or not even minimum wage. And I think quite a lot of people's circumstances, but they work this out, unfortunately. Um, you know, you're basically just running a hobby. You're basically doing this as a hobby. And what that's not what we want from you for you. Like I want everyone to be earning like a decent amount of money, um, you know, so that you can, um, you know, really, really enjoy being a nail technician. And so much comes from from being able from making money. Like it's not like, yes, we love doing nails, but if we make money doing it, actually we can offer much, much better services and we can enjoy our jobs so, so much more and enjoy our lives more. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Like we, we've chosen to be now technicians because we're passionate about it. Um, so it's so important to, um, to, know, to, to know your pricing, basically. Um, <laughs> it's quite interesting because there's a book um, called, oh, what's it called now? I've forgotten what the name of it was. Um, oh, The E-Myth. The E-Myth Revisited. Oh my God, it's an amazing book. And he talks about something called the entrepreneurial seizure. And it's basically where someone like, for example, if you're an nail tech or you, you, you want to be an nail tech and you go out and you do the course and you know you're really good at doing nails and, and you decide like over the course of time or just suddenly one day someone plants that seed in your head and they're like, right, we're going to, you know, I think I'm going to start a business. So you, you suddenly become, you're someone who's great at doing nails and then all of a sudden you're flipped over to being an entrepreneur and starting your own business. And the problem is, is that even if you are good at nails, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can be great at running a business doing nails. Because as we all know, I'm sure for anyone that is already set up and anyone who's already working, that it takes more than just being a great nail technician to have a great nail business. Like it comes along with everything else, like marketing and sales especially, um, but so much more than that as well. Um, and that's what we cover a lot in the Nail Business Success Club, which is um, our membership that we run. So I'm not really going to talk about that very much today, but that is one of the things that we do over in the Nail Business Success Club is help you with all of the other stuff, the business stuff that doesn't relate to you actually being a good nail technician. Um, and the other thing as well is if, you, if you're not charging like a decent amount and you're not, at, and when you figure this out, if you do this later, and it may be for some of you that it actually hits home a little bit and you're like, darn, like, you know, I'm really not earning the amount that I thought I was earning or I'm really not earning what I should be earning or, oh, my God, I'd make more money if I went and worked in Tesco's for a lot less hassle. Um, you know, it, it might make you feel a bit shit. But do know that you can move forward on this and that you can charge whatever it is. And that, again, like I'm here to help you to have that confidence to do that today. Because if you're not making any money from it, even if you're happy with that at the start with, and you're like, oh, well, I'm just happy with like whatever I can get. The thing is, is that as you move forward, you might start resenting it and you start resenting those clients that aren't giving you the money that you deserve. So and also by charging more and by having a good profit and a good hourly rate, like everything in your business becomes so much easier because you're not in that scarcity mindset all the time. You know, you can afford to buy the new stuff that you need to buy. You can do exciting things that you want to do in your business. Like you can book to go on events. You can book and go and do more courses. Like so much comes from knowing that you've got like a great price and that you're making some money. <laughs> so without further ado, let me move you on to the spreadsheet. Um, so let me just check if there's Oh, loads of people watching. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Fiona said, will this be saved? Yes, it will be saved. Um, it's going to be uploaded into YouTube. But if you do hang around on here, it means that I can answer your questions for you um, live. And at the end of this, we'll be doing a live Q&A session as well, if 
hopefully I get through it in time and we've got time because I've got to go live over my nail business at Sets Club at 12. Um, Sharon said, will the spreadsheet be sent out automatically to us if we already receive emails from you, Joanna? No, you still need to sign up for this one because it's set up in an automation. So um, yeah, just sign up again on that after this. Um, right, okay, let me share my screen with you. Did already practice earlier. Uh, there we go, share screen. Right. Okay, right. So here we have, please send me some love hearts. Let me know you can see this <laughs> before I talk through the whole thing. And you're like, I can't see the screen. <laughs> Are you seeing my Excel spreadsheet? I know it takes a moment for um, Facebook to catch up. So yes, brilliant, lovely, loads of hearts and things, perfect. So um, there are two tabs to this um, screen. So we've got the first one is product cost per service. And the second one is working out how much to charge. So if you download this on a computer, it will be at the bottom. If you download it on your phone, it will put the tabs will probably be at the top. So there's two tabs. So we start with the first one. <laughs> obviously. So um, this one is our profitable um, pricing masterclass Excel sheet. And this first one is product costs per service. So what this one does, and I basically I've lined it out with one example for you. And then you can obviously just oh, copy over, you know, copy and paste basically underneath for any other services that you offer. So I've based it on a CND shellac fingers. So the first thing we need to know when we're working out our costs, and then how much we need to charge is um, is how much the actual products cost. And this is probably the most complicated part of it is working out how much you spend on product each service that you do. Now, if you work with quite a reputable company, so like, for example, C&D through Sweet Squared um, or um, Jellish, like they'll be able to provide you with a breakdown of costs for, for each product that they sell. So for example, with Sweet Squared, I was able to just contact them and ask them for a cost per service um, PDF and they basically just send it out and it's got everything listed on it. So for example, I'm gonna base this all on a CND shellac fingers or toes um, service. Um, so we've got the product. So basically I'd go through and I would recommend that you do this because it could be that you use slightly different things. I went through every single um, thing that I use during a C and D shellac fingers or toes. So nourish and remove being acetone with, with C and D through to the foil wraps. And I've basically averaged these out. Cause I'm like, well, I know like half of the clients are probably gonna need removal. Um, so you use your kind of common sense on that. Hand sanitizer, shellac color, you know, top coat, base coat, disperse, even down to the lamp. Like I know, cause I've been doing it a while. I knew that roughly my lamps, because we're mobile and they get bashed up a little bit that they last kind of a year. So I kind of could work out roughly how much um, the lamp was going to cost me for my services. So I'm going to go into all of this a little bit more in detail in a moment, but um, you know, how many, like the files, the lint free pads, because the thing is, is that when the, um, for example, with Sweet Squared, when they send me their um, cost per service list, they don't include all the extras that I need. So they include like acetone, you know, um, disperse, um, you know, the shellac base coat, color coat, top coat, all the things, but they don't include all the little disposable bits that I needed, like nail files and lint free pads and things. So I would go through all of that, like even down to like kitchen towel I've popped in it, um, the use of my washer dryer for each service. Um, so I've actually worked that out, um, like, based on like online things and all sorts of things and um, worked out the calculation of that. So feel free to use that. Um, like the cost of my purse or my comfort softener for each one, um, gloves per appointment. And so what I've done is then in this size um, column, which is column B, um, let me just make sure that everyone can hear me and everything. Oh, thanks daddy. <laughs> um, in this column here, it's got size. So what I wanted to, because obviously everyone's products are going to be different and every, everything. So ideally you want to be buying in bulk because obviously it's going to make your costs cheaper. So that's what we do at French and Dutch. We buy everything in as big as possible. But obviously when you're starting out, you might not have the investment for that. So totally fine to be buying the smaller amounts if you need to, but just know that your costs will go down if you buy it in bigger bulk. And obviously again, depends on your distribu uh, distributor and your brand as to how big a bulk like they sell 
for you. So I would write your size down here. Now, for, I'm just going to base this on nourish and remover, which is acetone basically with sweet squared. So um, 32 ounces is the size of the bottle. And I know that it cost me £17.94. And again, these prices actually are old. So don't use these prices, like go and get your own prices um, from sweet squared, because these are based on like a couple of years ago when, um, when I when I got them then. <laughs> so Sweet Spread are really helpful because they can tell me how many services are in each thing. So they'll tell me you get 64 services per 32 ounce bottle, for example. And I'm not sure if they, and with some of them, they didn't. So some of them I had to work out myself. And the way that you can do this, and it is, again, a little bit complicated, but when you go do a treatment, for example, on yourself, and you can buy like mini pipettes from Amazon, which have got like milliliters um, upside on them. And you can actually see, so I knew then like roughly how much of a, um, how much I was using of acetone for removal. Because again, like the distributors might, might say you can get a hundred services out of something, but you don't know whether that's true. And I mean, in some cases, like I would just trust it. And especially if you've got like a good brand that you use and just trust it. But if you don't, um, or you're not sure, or they don't, they can't even tell you, which just is just insane. Um, then you can work it out yourself by buying like a pipette and like basically doing one treatment and seeing how much of each milliliter of stuff that you've got. Um, and then obviously dividing that by the total size of the bottle. And then you'll know how many services that you've got per bottle of each thing. Um, so this Excel spreadsheet is set up with a formula on it here. So it's basically taking um, uh, your cost, including VAT. So and I base this as well, because I think most of you aren't going to be VAT registered. So it's all based on you not being VAT registered. So obviously you do have to pay your VAT. So you include all the costs, including VAT here. It divides it by the number of services, and that's going to give you how much. Um, so for example, in this one, I spend 28p on nourish and remover for every CND shellac fingers or toes appointment that I do. And yes, I might not need to use acetone on some of my clients. So I've just kind of left it that it's like half basically so that um, I, because that way it's just, I, I know not every single client. In fact, I think this one I have left it in full, but then it's basically, I know that maximum it's going to cost me, yes, what I've done, maximum it's going to cost me £4.64 for the cop for the whole service um, for the products. But it could, like some clients obviously might not need acetone, but then there might be some that need more than others because I have to rewrap them, etc. So it kind of all averagely works out. Um, so that's how that works. So give me a love hurt if that makes sense. <laughs> um and then yeah i mean it's pretty self-explanatory like here lymph-free pads like i work I bet again like i work through like how many lymph-free pads i mean obviously sweet squared aren't going to be able to tell me how many lymph-free pads like i personally use for each service so i bet you did a service and just worked out how many that i would use for that um and then based it on there so you basically just you can just go into this once it's been sent over to you, you can just go into this and um and basically I just update everything with your own figures and your own. So you'll need to go in, update the size, number of services and the cost including VAT. And then it's going to work it out for you here. So once you've got that and you can do this for every service, like I, I did spend a long time, like a day probably like figuring this all out. So I probably like before, obviously not like for this, but for my business. And so I had this worked out for every single service that we did. And really interestingly, like especially my add on services like nail art, um, you know, how much I was spending on like stamping plates and nail art. Like I soon realized that actually charging five pounds wasn't really God, it wasn't really that great you know I wasn't really making much money and so even if you are you know pretty sure that you're making money because obviously at the end of the day you know at the end of the month whether you've got money or not and whether you've been able to buy things whether you've been able to pay your rent and stuff but you know it can be sometimes that there might be specific treatments that you're like oh my god I didn't realize actually I'm not making any money from this and the girls that are in the nail business success club that have done these things already um you know they have all found that there were gaps in their services where they weren't making as much money as they were with other other treatments. So um, even if you, you think you know, like it's so worth like spending the time to do it. So once we've got that for the service, you basically go over onto the next tab, which is working out how much to charge. Um, so this one, I'm just going to go through. So at the top, you basically have got your just make sure everyone's all right. They can still hear me, hear me and everything. I think they can. Um, so along the top, you've got your services. So you, again, you can do this for all services. So you can just add in, you can just highlight this and insert 
one left basically if you want to add more and more treatments in because you know ideally you want to do this for every single treatment that you have and add-on services because it's so interesting adding on add-on services especially for mobile because you make so much more money um, when you're not traveling between clients every one hour so you would put your price in here um and then basically it's going to go down and you've basically got two types of costs that you're going to need to fill in. So you've got your variable costs and your fixed costs. And the reason that I like to do this is because so variable costs are costs that you only that are only associated to your business if you do the service. So for example, if you do your product costs, you know, if you don't do a shellac, then you don't pay for that product, do you? It's not going to, you don't have to pay, um, you know, you're not, you're not losing that product if someone doesn't have the treatment. You've still got it there, so it's not lost every time. Whereas something like a fixed cost would be something like your rent. You know, you have to pay that even if you didn't have a single, and by rent, I mean if you rent, like, a space in someone's salon or if you rent, a, if you have a salon with a lease, um, then you, um, you know, you have to pay that whether you have any clients or not. Um, and the same with things like, so I'll just go through kind of, actually, let me start with the variable ones. So, um, product costs, obviously, that's where you would draw, bring it from the other tab. So that's, I've put that in already, £4.64. Um, this is mileage. So, um, yes, sorry, I'm just answering a question. Gillian, yes, you will be able to watch this later. It's going to be saved up into YouTube. But if you do hang around, it means that you can ask questions at the end um, if we've got time. So, yeah, for anyone that's um, working mobile, this. Um, I know can be a bit difficult for people to understand. It's like how much do you how much do you charge for working mobile to like when you're traveling to clients' houses? So you need to work out like what distance it is between your house and 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 your average customer. So for us, we work within like an eight mile radius, um, but we don't always travel eight miles. So an average, like some clients could be literally like a third of a mile away and some clients might be eight miles so we have to, we've basically done it on an average that each client is four miles away um and what we do is we the, the government give a recommended allowance uh, which basically means that you can have tax-free amount of 45p per mile so that's what we've based our mileage on on 45p per mile that's averagely what it costs when you break it down with petrol and depreciation on your vehicle and your insurance. Um, so if you just get an average of how much you spend or how, how far you travel to your clients on average, and then I times that by two because I've got to get there and I get back, and that then gives you your figure. Now, if you're someone who just works like one client at a time, so maybe you only work in the evenings and you're only going to one client at a time, then yes, you need to double it um, so that you're getting there and you're getting back. However, if you're someone like with us, where we do like an eight hour shift of, of mobile now appointments and um, you know when we're only then then yes we've got to get to the first client but then to get to the second client like we're not having to do backwards and forwards on each client so then again your costs go down if you're doing that so think about how you are um how you are working if you are working mobile and then just times that by 45p and then you just input that into this column here so I know now for shellac fingers, I spend average on £3.60 per mileage, which covers my petrol, depreciation on my car and my insurance. I spend £4.64 on products. And then lastly, if you use a card machine or a booking system that takes payment, um, then this is set up with a formula in it as well. So, for example, if you know that, I mean, it could be you might need to work it out manually, in which case just delete the formula and just write your own figure in. But I know, so basically this is taking 35 divided by 100 and times 1.75, which basically means that I'm paying 1.75%, which we were, was what we were using before we moved over to Fresher. We were paying 1.75% to iZettle for every card payment that we took. And we took 99% of our clients were paying by card. So again, I knew that was a variable cost. If we did that appointment, that had to go to iZettle. And then I've left it free. So again, you can just like highlight and insert one below or one above if you want to add in more things. So you, it could be, you know if you're in a salon and you um rent a chair but you you pay commission as opposed to a fixed fee then that would go in here so you know if she's if whoever it is that you're renting the space from is like okay well you don't pay a fixed rent but you pay i don't know whatever it is 30 percent of your um amount that you take to the salon then that would go in there as well and then moving on to fixed costs so i've included what we have 
I mean, it could be that you have lots of different ones. Um, it could be that you've got, for example, like utilities, like if you rent somewhere, like, or if you lease somewhere, you've got utilities. It might be that you have other things that you pay for. And the best way that I do to find these out is I just go through my bank statements, basically, for the last months that you worked and see what is coming out of your account and what needs to go in here. Now, if you are working from home, um, I, you do not need to include your own like mortgage or rent in these fixed costs because you've got to pay that whether you're doing that business or not. If, for example, you've bought a cabin in the garden um, and you are paying like installments on that, um, it's, it's up to you whether you include it. I mean, is it adding value to your house? And, you know, I presume it's not that you wasn't bought through your business and it was bought personally. So, you know, and that is like a fixed kind of big um investment cost rather than like a cost that you're paying per service but it's up to you if you want to kind of be like well i want to reap that money back and i so i need to make sure that my prices reflect that then take that amount that you've paid for it and divide it maybe over five years and how many services you might think you do over five years and pop that into into this fixed costs area but like you've got things like website charges rent accountants bills facebook marketing ads um um, Canva, I know I pay for Canva like £10 a month. So um, I basically based this on if I was going to do 100 appointments a month and I've basically divided everything. So for example, Canva, yeah, it cost me £10 a month. If I do 100 appointments a month, then that then works out at 10p per service. So I've put little notes all down the side here for you. Um, so you need to, in order to work this out, you need to know how many treatments you want to do a month like where do you want to get to or whereabouts are you now if that's a big difference so you know if you're only doing 10 treatments a month then at the moment you're going to find that your costs are much higher because you've got all these fixed costs only divided by 10 whereas if you've got if you're doing 100 100 treatments a month and i'm basing this on one hour treatments um you know then you know, then it's costing you a lot. Let all those fixed costs are the same whether you do ten clients a month or a hundred clients. So they 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 go lower. So actually, even once you've done this, you might find over time, okay, well now I'm doing a hundred clients a month, a hundred appointments a month. So I need to go back in and adjust this, and you'll find your costs. The more clients you do each month, the cheaper your cost is going to be per service as well. Um, so does that all make sense so far? <laughs> Karen said this is very helpful so that's good um give me a little love heart if that's all making sense and uh please let me know is anyone confused by anything that we've got to so far write it in the comments so I'm just going to move on to the next bit which is below this and actually working out your profit um but if anyone's got any questions or they're confused by that then um now's a really good time to ask um, and I can come back and have a look at the, the questions and the comments in just a moment. So once you've gone through and put all your fixed costs in, um, so I would start by doing one treatment, like do your, do your most popular, busiest, like booking treatment first, because that's like your most important one, you know, and I know everyone's not got hours and hours to do this. So if you've got, if you've only got like 15, 20 minutes to do something, like just do one at a time and just start working through it. Like get your slap fingers one, if that's your main thing first. Um, so once you've got all of that, you then move further down. So here, I've set up a formula. So it adds up every cost that you have here is added up and totaled in this total cost per service. So I can see now, based on what I've input here, that for every single CND shellac fingers I do, it's going to cost me £12.07. And, um, and so what it then does is it then takes you down to this profit one and again it's got a formula in there so it's going to basically take this figure your price minus all your costs and what you're left with so in this instance if I was paying 35 pounds for a shellac uh, or I was charging 35 pounds for a shellac and then I um, pay 12 pounds and seven pence for all my costs that leaves me with a profit of 22 pound 92 pence um, and what is also then really interesting to know is how much you are paying yourself per hour so that you can make sure that you are not paying yourself <laughs> under minimum wage. Um, and so that's where the next bit comes in. So in the next bit, you then need to put in the hours that you work. So 1.5 hours is one and a half hours. Um, so I've based this on being mobile. But again, it might be different for you. If you're working from home and you're like, okay, well, oh, let's start with a salon. If you're working in a salon, it might be that you have an hour for that treatment. Um, it might be that you have an hour and 15 minutes for that treatment if you include removal in it. Um, you know, 
it might be that you have an hour's appointment, but actually you need five minutes to clear up and, and redo it afterwards. Um, so you can basically pop that in. So whatever it is. So for example, and also like with mobile, like we have to allow half an hour. I, we allow at French Dutch half an hour's travel time between each client. That then actually allows us if we've run over a little bit, if someone wants like removal and they haven't said, you know, then it allows us that little bit of extra time and leeway so that we're not late for our clients. So I know for French and Drench, for every one hour, and this is the thing about mobile, it's even, and we'll go into it more about mobile in a bit, but for every one hour appointment you do, actually it's an hour and a half work. So I put an hour and a half in there. And so what it's doing is then got another formula in here, which is basically taking your profit divided by the amount of hours it's taken to do that appointment. And then here it's telling me, so I'm making £15.28 an hour. So again, does that all make sense? Give me some, <laughs> give me a thumbs up and let me know if that's all making sense. Um, and it's so interesting to see all of this. Um, and then like from this, so now you know, like what profit you're making, um, you know, how much you're, you're paying yourself per hour. Um, now, obviously you need to take tax off of this, but you have that whether you're working a, an employed job or you're self-employed. So you don't need to take the tax off to prove how much you're paying yourself. Like the tax comes afterwards. So yes, you do need to pay your tax. And for anyone, obviously speak to an accountant. I'm not an accountant, but um, you know, this is just based on what I do for French and Drench, basically. But if you um if you pay yourself anything over like about a thousand pounds a month, then you need to be starting to pay tax. And tax normally that tax normally, depending on your tax code, will normally start at 20%. So you would then need to know that you need to put 20% away. But that you have to do that whether you're employed or not. So it doesn't make any difference. So hopefully that's been helpful. Let me bring you back to my pretty face. <laughs> Um, da -da -da. where am I here right remove that all right I'm back hi <laughs> um right so Karen said I haven't used Excel before I did a course years ago but never necessitate necessitated using it now I wouldn't know how cool so you can like just have a go like it's not all the formulas are there so you all you really need to do is input your amount into it if you mess it up like just come and ask over in the Nelson Sales Group and I'll try and help you. Or I'm sure there's tons of free Excel trainings on Google, so have on YouTube. So if you don't know how to use Excel, I would say it's a really useful thing to have as a nail technician who owns a business because, you know, you ideally you want to be able to use it so that you can work out your figures and it's the easiest way. And also you could take this offline. Like if you really don't like computers and you're like, I just want to do it by hand, like you can take it offline and use a calculator to work it out. So you know, just grab yourself a big bit of paper and, and write it all out. Um, right, okay, so hopefully that's helped. So now I just wanted to move on to, and we are running a bit behind, so I'm gonna try and speed through this a little bit. But um, what I wanted to move on to next was um, how I feel and what I would recommend with how experience, location, and the way that you work can affect the price that you charge. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to talk about experience a little bit. Um, now, you kind of have two options when you start. So I'm assuming a lot of you have probably already started your businesses. So this has probably already been decided for you. But if you are new, um, you know, and your experience is you're new to doing nails as well, then you've got kind of two options. Um, you can one, you can start lower on the price and move it up over time. Or two, you can... Um, just start where you want to be. <laughs> so I've got a girl, a lady, um, lovely lady called Saskia over in the Nail Business Success Club. She actually lives in Germany. And she is, um, she's got a full-time job anyway, but she's doing nails on the side. But she has decided to just go in at that top price to start with. Because for her, it was like, it's not worth her doing it. She already got another job anyway. It's not worth her doing it at those lower amounts. So she's just decided to just go straight in at that higher amount. But I do understand that it's a confidence issue for a lot of people. Sorry, I'm really itchy nose. I always see you on <laughs> live. It's that hay fever that's coming in. Um, a lot of people that, um, they don't have the confidence. I know I didn't have the confidence. So just to let you know like what happened with French and Drench. So when we started, I charged £25 for a shellac. Um, and I've grown my confidence over time. And when I was charging that, and even when we went into the 30s, um, every time I put my prices up, it is scary. But I comes with comes with experience comes confidence and comes the clients oh my god so many clients that i knew i had the confidence to increase the prices um and now we're at 40 pounds and when we were at 25 
early 30s. I was, no way am I ever, ever going to charge more 40 pounds for schlack. Absolutely no way in hell would I ever, ever have said that I was going to do that. I was like, I want to be affordable. I want to be, you know, I really want to be nice to my clients. But interestingly, and I hope this happens for all of you, like over time, as you build your businesses and as you get fully booked, and again, this is one of the things we go through in the Nail Business Success Club, is how to get fully booked and earn in those 5K months. Like as you get busier and as you get full, you are, it's, like putting your prices up is the easiest way to move forward with your business and to grow it. So like you do just, this confidence comes with it, but knowing your prices to start with is so, so important. Um, so you can either choose, so depending on your experience, like just because you're new to nails, do not think that you have to charge less. That's what I kind of want to get across with this. Um, you know, you have just as much right to start at a higher price. And it might be that that higher price is going to be your lowest price that you ever do. And actually, you're going to go up from there. And I'm going to move on to the next one, um, which is location of how, lo how location affects your price. And this may surprise some of you. It won't for those that are in the Nail Business Success Club or, um, or have watched my trainings before. But lo your location should have nothing to do with your price. Your competition should have nothing to do with your price either. So if you're coming and saying, oh, but Joe, <laughs> I've got hundreds of nail technicians in my area and they all charge 10 to 15 pounds. I'm already the most expensive and I've done my workings out and I'm still not earning over minimum wage. Um, you know, I can't possibly put my prices up. I'm going to tell you that you can. You really, really can. Like you shouldn't be like those other people, they do not know that they're not making any money, but they will at some point. And they are going to either have to up their prices or stop offering services because who wants to work for five pounds an hour? Like no one, like it's just pointless when it's actually quite a hard job and you've got to, you know, get your skill up and everything like that. So you do not need to worry about what everyone else is charging. It's, and it makes no difference. Like I'm in an area where there's now technicians around me. And this is the things that people come and say, oh, I can't because like so-and-so is doing it at this price. And how can I possibly charge more? No one's going to use you. Like people will want to use you. So I want to give you an example of like Primark and like Mark Jacobs bags, for example. So you can go and buy a Primark bag for what? Five pounds? You can go and buy a Mark Jacobs bag for what? A thousand pounds? 500 pounds? 100 times what Primark are charging for it. And yes, they're not going to charge the volume that Primark charge, but it's a hell of a lot easier. They have to have a hell of a lot less staff. And what I want to get across with this is that it's the same with every single industry, with every single product on sale. You are not unique living in an area where there are hundreds of other nail technicians. That is not a reason to not charge what you should be charging so that you are earning money because you have every single other nail technician in the country, probably in the world, will be swamped with other nail technicians around them. I could probably go within a one mile radius of where I live and find 30 nail technicians, easy. And they'll all be charging less than me, but yet we were the ones that were fully booked. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit more in a moment. Um, but it, basically if you try if you have a look around and you're like oh but this person's offering this amount and this person's offering this amount i'm just going to go in at the average even though i'm not going to make any money one it's going to make you resentful and not want to carry on doing it but two you are not differentiating yourself from everyone else so if you um if you do the same as everyone else and charge the same as everyone else you are going to struggle to get clients if you differentiate yourself and you offer a premium service, because you could go down the other route of being like the cheapest, but I would not recommend that as a single nail technician because you can't um, you can't do volume as a single nail technician. So you can't be a Primark as a single nail technician. You want to be up the Gucci end, the Mark Jacobs end. Sorry, those are so itchy. Um, so you need to like charge by charging more. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. They think oh, I'm going to lose, lose loads of clients and no one's going to book in with me, but it's the complete opposite. If you charge more than everyone else, um, then you are actually putting yourself in a different league to everyone else. And it doesn't necessarily, I mean, yes, experience can help, but it doesn't have to be like, you can just start at that end. If you're wanting to, you can just start at the top end and it only takes a few tweaks in your business in order to charge more. You know, you need to, you need to have like good online. You need to have good booking systems. You need to have good service in place, offer good brands, like turn up on time. Like, but for a lot of you, you're probably doing this anyway, but just not charging the premium that, that goes with it. And, and a lot of the time as well, I'm going so itchy. I'm just having a little drink. Um, 
like for a lot of um a lot of nail technicians i've forgotten what i was going to say now there's a bloody fly going around as well. um i forgot what i was gonna say for a lot of nail technicians um oh, i've completely forgotten it's gone so we'll move on so that's good because i need to move on anyway because i was going to run out of time for a q a session but going for high, going for the higher end is going to make it so much easier. It's going to differentiate you. Yes, it might be a bit scary, like it is scary. I know going in higher, but you. And again, this is where the nail business success club comes in because, like, we really help you with your confidence and getting your all of your. Like, it's important to have all your. Basically, you need to position. This is what I was going to say. You need to position yourself in the market as a premium service, and there are clients for everyone. Like, they're like for example, Primark and and Mark Jacobs or Gucci or whatever. Like they go for different clients. Like they're not going for the same client, um, you know, and yes, some people might have a Primark and a Gucci bag. So yes, that people, even themselves, they sometimes want something more exclusive. And by charging more, you are like, you're all doing the same nails pretty much. Like, yes, okay, someone's nails might be slightly different or slightly better or whatever, but you're all charged, you're all doing a very similar service. And yeah, it's the experience and the, um, experience and the quality and you and your brand and how you've positioned yourself, which is going to make the difference between whether you can, whether you're charging like, you know, 20 pounds for a slag or 40 pounds for a slag. And don't you want to be that one that's charged? Like someone's got to be the most expensive. So it might as well be you. It might as well be you. You know, you're, you, everything just becomes so much easier if you charge more for your services because you've got more money to, clean your stuff properly you've got more money to do more training you can invest in more colors more glitters you can do like nail art you can do so much stuff you can go out and do london fashion week you can like have time to write columns for like scratch magazine time to do pr time to do your marketing whereas if you're charging less like everything else gets like it's just stressful everything's really really hard um karen said bugger that i know my work and frankly i'm not afraid of charging more than others i don't know how they can make a living doing schlack for just a few bucks exactly my kind of thoughts on it as well is what's the point what's the point of being in this and doing this if we're not gonna make any money so um lastly um i wanted to talk a little bit about um in this section uh, how you work affecting your price so whether you're mobile whether you're in a salon or whether if you're from home and whether you think you need to up or lower your price accordingly based on that again no do not need to just the way that you position it who's giving me an angry face <laughs> it's just the way that you position it so for example if you are mobile I hear people say, well, how can I chart? Like, I'm just mobile. I've got no costs um, or lower costs. Um, how is it possible for me to charge as much as, like, the most luxury salon in town? And that's what we do at French and Drench. And my reply is that time, your time, your client's time, is the most expensive resource that there is in this world. Like we only have a limited amount of time to live our lives. And if you are saving your client half an hour of their life and their time, and a lot of these people that have mobile appointments are busy, busy people. They want mobile because they can't get to the salon in time. They are busy. They've got kids. They work. Um, you know, you are providing a service that is saving them time. And that is why they will pay the premium for it. And your, the fact that it takes you, and if anyone questions it, like, because sometimes my clients do say, oh, like, oh, we, you know, it, you, it's a really good business you're in because, you know, you don't have all these costs. And I'm like, actually, I have the biggest cost. I have to spend half an hour of my time for every one and a half appointments that a salon can do, I can only do one. So that is why I can charge, oh, Rosanna said, sorry, clumsy fingers. It was an angry face. <laughs> That's fine. That's something to do with real read uh read it um you know you can charge more because you are mobile so you know again you do not need to be worrying about what others and if other now technicians are like well i'm mobile and i don't have any costs so i'm not charging anything well they're just fools because like they don't understand the value of time they're fools that's the wrong word but they just they, they don't understand like the importance of their time and they don't value their own time um, and that is just so important because, you know, you could be in a salon, you're making, if you're charging 30 pounds for a shellac in a salon, then you're making 45 pounds an hour because you can do one and a half in the time that you can only do one. 
Um, and also you've got all the costs of your petrol and everything. So that's how I can justify like a mobile price. If you're working from home, it's, an, it's another thing as well. Like you are, it's exclusivity, someone coming into your home to do their nails. Like you are opening up your home for people to come on a one-to-one -one basis. And it's, the service can be so much different in your home as it can to a salon. So again, like you do not need to think, oh, I've got to charge less um, than, than the salons because I just do it from home and everyone's going to know that I haven't got any costs. You have got costs. Like you've got costs to your well-being. You've got to clean your house like every single day to make sure it's really nice when people come in. It's stressed to your family. Like you need to be charging accordingly for that if people are coming into your home. And again, if you've got a cabin in the garden, like you've had to pay for that. Like, you know, you've got to, again, no reason why you should be charging less. You are offering an exclusive one-to-one -one service that you do not get in most salons. Um, and then again, for those of you that like rent a space and things, like, again, you do not need to think that just because you, you don't own like a whole salon that your prices need to be lowered um, to attract people. Again, it's like the positioning of your marketing and the way that you portray your brand online and the online stuff is so, so important for every single one of you because without having a footfall of like thousands of people coming past your building every day, having an online presence is the biggest thing that you can do. Um, and, but yeah, you, even if you're like renting a room, like again, like most people that rent a space, it's more of a one-to-one -one kind of service. You know, you're not the nail bars, like where they've got like 20 people sitting in them and they're having their nails dipped for 40 minutes before, you know, they sit down and the appointments don't run on time and blah, blah, blah. Like you're offering such a better service. So again, that's a really main, main reason why you can charge whatever it is that you want for your service. You do not need to lower your price just because of like a story that you're telling yourself around around something. Like it all comes down to the confidence. Um, you know, it all comes down to, and, and you won't have all of this to start with, but like depending on where you are on your journeys, like Karen's like commenting, you know, that she's she, she knows what she's worth and she's not afraid of charging it. I know like it's easy to say for those people that are confident and things. And, and I know there'll be a lot of you out there that are like, oh, but you know, it's just so scary to put my prices up and it's just so scary to, um, you know, to charge more than anyone else. And, and a lot of that will come down to like your money stories. You know, are you, you don't, you don't feel like you're worthy of that money for some reason. So like journaling around that can be really key and important as well. Um, because at the end of the day, there's people out there and you can say, oh, well, you know, I'm not putting my prices up, Joe, because like, yeah, I'm not making any money, but I'm not going to put my prices up because like all these people around me aren't making, oh, you know, I haven't got enough clients as it is and all these people around me are charging, um, you know, less. Um, and all I'm going to say is, well, people have done it before you. And they've succeeded so you know it's possible if you want it to happen it's possible for every single one of you you don't need to hold yourself back you can have the confidence to charge what you're worth and to make all of your dreams come true like you know we've all set up these businesses to have like probably one to have like a um uh free more of a free life like we're not tired to um you know being employed by someone else you know we've got we get to be creative every day we get amazing um my nose is so itchy. It's so bad. What's my, she knows me other than hay fever. <laughs> um, it's, I know it's hard. I forgot what I'm saying, but I know it's hard to, to incre increase your prices and to, and have the confidence, but just know that others have done it before you and it hasn't been the end of the world. And kind of just moving on to that, onto the last thing that I kind of want to say on this um, before I answer any questions. So if you've got questions, please pop them in the comments because um, it takes a minute or so for them to come up. So I'm just um, going to carry on to the last few bits that I just wanted to say. But um, if you do the Excel sheet and it find and you find out that actually you're not charging enough to be paying yourself what you want to be charging, um, what you can do is there's a number of things one you can try and lower your costs so that's the quick and easy thing so well maybe <laughs> so you could find is there a different place that you can get your products from is there a, a cheaper supply and i wouldn't i don't mean by this that you need to go out and change brands because that's not cost effective um but you know is there somewhere going forward that you could buy a cheaper brand now we use cd schlack so i know i don't know that's not the cheapest it's not the most expensive um i've never changed brands like i'm 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 completely um like loyal to them and I, I love it um but 
is there, for example, nail files, like we used, when we started, we used C&D nail files. Now, do not use C&D nail files, I use a cheap brand of nail files, like find, find cost saving things where you can. Um, it could be if you're mobile that you, you have a smaller area, like by having a smaller area mobile, you will save money because you've got less petrol, less mileage costs, less um, time between each client. So that's a big part of it as well. Um, and then if, if you've done those things and you've kind of looked at your costs and, and get rid of anything that you don't like need, you know, um, and it's important to know like when to invest in your business and, and what's a waste. So like if you've done like 20 nail art courses and no one else is, and no, no one's really booking in for nail art, well, one, you need to even market it better, or two, stop doing nail art courses, because again, you're just, that's something that you want to do for you, but you can do that out of your, you know, maybe that's just like more of a personal thing than something that you're doing for your business. Um, whereas things that actually, what you want to invest in is things that are going to grow your business. So again, I wouldn't recommend just going out and like, this is what a lot of people do, is they're like, oh, well, um, you know, I, I haven't got enough clients, so I'm going to go and, um, I'm going to go and, uh like do another training course and learn something different but again that just makes it worse like the more niche and specialist you are the better it is for your business so the more treatments that you learn to do and the more you expand actually you're just kind of diluting what you're trying to sell and it, it actually gets harder and harder to do that marketing and sales wise um so um yeah like training in things such as like if you don't know how to market your business then like or you don't know how to run your business successfully, or you don't know how to get fully booked, or you don't know how to grow your Facebook follower, or you don't know how to use Instagram, like go and learn, like all those things we teach over in the Nail Business Success Club. And the waitlist um, I'll pop up at the end for people if they want to join the waitlist because the doors are closed at the moment. But, um, you know, we, we go through all of that. And the girls that are in there already, you know, they're all like, all like the biggest of them, there's like their confidence has grown, like, and, you know, that then comes with being able to charge more, which is essentially the better way to run business. Um, so if you do come to the thing where you're like, right, okay, well, I've done this Excel and my prices aren't, I'm not making enough money. So I, I, at the end of the day, all I can do now is put them up, um, like how to do it. So one, you just need to eat that frog and just do it. Like um, for anyone that's watching this live or before the end of like coronavirus lockdown, like now is a great time to do it because your clients might not, might not even really notice the difference very much if you put in your prices up. Um, and also it's just a good clean slate, like take anything out of your business that isn't working for you and give yourself like time now to, um, you know, make those price increases, like change the opening times if you're not happy with the opening times. Like now is a great time to reset and, re and make sure your business is running how you want it to. So you do just need to eat that frog and just do it. Like just go and update them on your website or go and update them on your Facebook page and just like, and then I'll just tell you a little bit about the way that I announce it. So we've done, I've done numerous price increases, like tons of price increases over the time that I've had French and Drench, which is my mobile now business. And, um, and the way that I do it is I don't plaster it all over Facebook. So it's something that's private. Um, I will tell the clients that I know will notice. So anyone that, basically, if they're booking in online, then they'll see the new prices when they go to book because we use our booking system. If they're booking in on the phone, we'll tell them. And if they are booking in at their old appointment, then we'll say, like, basically what I do is I put the prices up and then at their next appointment, I say, our prices have gone up. Um, I've kept yours the same this time, but next time, or sometimes I do next month if I'm feeling... <laughs> particularly worried about it i'm like the prices are going up you know if i'm in march i'm like the prices are going up in april you've got the next couple of appointments at the same price and then they'll be going up and it just gives them that time to adjust and get used to it and um, i don't class them all over facebook you do not want all your new clients seeing that your prices have just gone up like just keep them like keep it under wraps like you do not need to announce it on facebook to everyone like just keep it to the people that need to know um uh what else That's probably the main thing I want to say on that. Um, examples of time. Um, yeah, just one example I just wanted to give, like with our most recent increase when we went to 40, 40 was a big jump for me. And we had put our prices up quite a lot in a short space of time. And um, it'd been a, I don't know, maybe another eight months, six months, eight months since we put them up and I wanted to put them up to 40 um, because we were full. And it's a great way to grow a business. Once you get full, put the prices up. This is how I teach you now with this up. Like teach all the marketing, get full, get put your prices up, get full, put your prices up, get full, put your prices up. And so you can just then end up like with loads of 
um, you know, really good pricing as opposed to not making any money. Um, and but the, the last one, I was feeling like, oh, and I go to each client and I'm like doing the nails and then oh, loads of love hearts and that. Um, go to each client and I'm like, oh, I'm sitting there doing the nails and I'm like, I've got to tell them at the end that the price is going up. I've got to tell them at the end that the price is going up. <laughs> Just like all of you would. And um, and then, and I'm like, oh, am I going to do it this time or are we going to save it till next time? <laughs> but you know what? I tell, and, I, and this is a really good thing to do, is write down a list of reasons why you are worth that. Write them down because that, when I'm during those appointments and I'm not right at the end, and, and I tell them at the end, so I, I don't tell them in the beginning or the middle of the appointment because I don't want to, I don't want them to be thinking about it the whole time. So I basically save it right to the end. I take their payment, and as I'm taking their payment, that's when I then tell them. And I just have to do it. You just have to do it. Like know you are worth it, and by writing down like a list of reasons why you are worth it will help when you're at that appointment to be like, right, okay, I can, I can do this, Joe. Like you know, you've got this. Like you deserve this money. And like as well, like thinking like, what is the worst case scenario? Scenario, what that client like some of my clients have left but what you find is when they leave it opens up the door to, to for the clients that want 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 to pay more and people do want to pay more like I personally would never go to a nail bar that's charging 10 pounds because I don't want to go somewhere that's charging 10 pounds because it's going to make me feel crap they're probably going to crap up my nails like I want to pay more and I uh, really just one last like thing um uh one last um oh my god i'm losing my mind <laughs> one last um example is we were looking this is a non nail related one but really like to the point me and my friend were looking for a party entertainer for our kids fifth birthday and we had a whole load of recommendations on facebook and we'd narrowed it down to like two so we like run this woman and she's like and she it seemed really cheap so she was like an hour uh two hours or something and it was like 100 pounds and she was going to travel like quite a long way to come and do it and um seemed really good but she didn't want to deposit and she was only charging 100 pounds when everyone else was charging like 150 to 200 pounds and so we were like this price is just too cheap like she sounded really nice on the phone she was offering exactly the same package as the others but we didn't go with her because it just the price did not reflect like I just did not have the trust in it I was like how is she doing it for that price like I don't understand and so again and that's a really like good example and you have the same like with hair with anything like anything that you go and buy if the price is higher you automatically assume that it's better like if it's lower you're like oh, I'm not sure you know um so it's so so important um to um to charge more so give me a who's still watching like please comment let me know what you thought of that like has that been helpful um i'm going to answer a few questions now before i have to run and go live in the nbsc so if anyone's watching from their nail business success club on here sorry i am going to be maybe five ten minutes late into our one so really apologies about that but if you can let anyone know in the other group if they have otherwise i'm just going to answer a few questions that we've got um and then if there are loads then i'll come back um tomorrow and do some more but michelle said when working out costs for extensions would you charge for different lengths as long or xl nails will use a bit more product um no no i wouldn't i think you need to just go with in for your costs go with the average um, because then you will have some that are cheaper than others, aren't you? Like some will be really short and some will be like longer. Um, if you know that if like if that's your specialty, um, you know, long nails, um, you know, then you'll know that actually I always use like this amount on average. Um, whereas if someone who's got clients that have more shorter nails, they'll know that, okay, well, they use this amount roughly. So yeah, I think it can get quite confusing on a price list. I know there are some nail techs that do it and some salons that have seen it, um, but there are some, but it can get quite confusing. I think you want to just be able to keep it simple. Um, and also like the more things you've got on offer, the just the more difficult it is. And also some of the clients, like if they don't really know how much they're going to be paying at the appointment, because they don't know, like it's quite difficult, isn't it? What is long, what is short? I mean, maybe if you're like, well, um, uh, stiletto nails, they take me longer, then maybe you'd have them as a specific service. Um, but I think just for acrylics and stuff, personally, if, if I was going to do it, I'd just have it as one set thing. Acrylics can be quite hard, like unless you're really quick at them, it can be quite hard, can't it, to make a good profit from that, I think, well, a good hourly rate. Um, 
I love all these um, itchy nose things. <laughs> I'll read through them later. Um, Hannah, hi Hannah. She said, thank you for this. It's been helpful. But do you think it's a good, uh, good time to increase prices now with what's happening with regards to lockdown? Yeah. So even though you might be in a position where you haven't been paid and that you are struggling, like that is not the reality for so many people. Like so many people are still working from home. Like a lot of people actually have more money because they are still doing their jobs at home. They're getting paid. They're not having to pay for travel. They haven't been going out. They've been saving all this money on nails. It's actually, and the fact that you've been close is actually the perfect time to increase your prices. And so many of us over in the Nail Business Success Club have been doing it um it's it really really is like i would say it's a better time than ever to put them up because you are opening on a reset like barely people aren't going to remember like the price and if they do if they're very focused on price um then you'll probably find like well if you work out your price this is the thing if you work out your price and you're like well i'm only making five pound an hour like is it not worth putting your prices up now rather than struggling along for another year um, and then and then putting them up like just just do it like if those clients are going to leave you might as well let them leave and refocus get the marketing up like now's a really good time as well like not only like just putting the prices up but like making sure that you're marketing on, on point that you're positioning your, your brand correctly so that the clients know that you are premium and that you offer a great service um Rosanna said, 100%, you deserve it. We have more PPE costs as well now and more cleaning in between. Yeah, and that's like, you can use that as an excuse as well, like even if that's not. Emma said, love this. I'm qualified makeup artist and qualified in nails in January. I feel so confident in makeup, but not gained industry experience with nails, leaving me less confident. So now I am trying to work out my costs that reflect both. I was going to go in on average in my area with nails, but I need to find my niche. Yeah, it's so important. Like we've got a whole training coming out in the Nail Business Success Club called um, Standing Out from the Crowd, which is totally about like finding your niche. It's so important. Like it's really good to hear that you know that because there's so many nail technicians that don't understand like about having a niche and how important that is to standing out. Um, she said, I watched your last Zoom and feel so much better already. Um, use all the tools you advised. Fabulous um fran said how do you usually take payment do you use a card reader as cash is not recommended in shops anymore yeah so i think that's a good point about having a premium service is you need to offer like the things that go with that so like uh, french and drench we actually we do use to take cash and card but now we've completely stopped taking any cash like a, over well over a year maybe a couple of years ago now and it's all done for our online booking system so we use fresher um, but bef before that we use eyes at all um and it's great. The, the costs are, are low. You know, it's it's one point seven five percent, I think, with Izetto, and one point two five percent with Fresher plus twenty p per booking. So the costs are low. Like, and they with with Fresher as well. Um, your booking is it's got cancellation insurance kind of on it. If someone cancels last minute, the card details are already held, so it's kind of like a deposit system as well. So that's really really good. Um, Fiona said, what PPE are you buying to restart? I'm confused. Everyone is buying different things. Um, so I would download the British Beauty Council's guidance. So that is what you need. And obviously, it depends on how you work. So you need to do a little um, uh, risk assessment. So go through your whole booking process, the whole thing from like how they book in right through to payment and see where could COVID be transmitted and how you can reduce the risk of that. Um, and I think the shields are the big recommendation and gloves, but go through the British Beauty Council's um, info on that. Um, Michelle said, this is my plan. I've changed my business name and logo, etc. I want to come back with a bang after lockdown. Yes, love it. Come out with a bang. Um, Holly said, so many want that or expect that for free. What are we talking about? I've forgotten. <laughs> um Hannah said, I do bank transfers. Billy said, would you recommend having a separate business and personal bank account? Yeah. Even if you're not a limited company and you're just a sole trader, like for sure having a separate bank account, like you can easily get one set up. Like either you can even like use someone like Tide, which is an online booking system, uh, an online um, bank, or obviously you can sign up with like Santander or HSBC or whoever, like one of the main kind of UK banks if you're in the UK. Um, but so, so much better for your business to have, have a separate because you just know, like you can see as well, like, like, and you can pay yourself like a set amount at the end of the month and you'll know then how much you're making. Um, Rosanna said, including, uh, da, 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 that's just a 
reply to someone else and mandy said what do you recommend if you're not as confident and as experienced but your other salon colleague is charge the same price or lesser cost that's a really good question i would go in at the same definitely at the same if you're in a salon with other people ideally you all want to be charging the same amount otherwise it's gonna make it much very difficult for you to um like one like i don't know it's just like if you're in a salon like everything needs to be the same in my eyes like you need to be like you know a team really um i understand that you're probably separate and that that you're both self-employed there but no i would definitely charge the same and also like big piggyback on the back off the back of her confidence with that um that's a really interesting question definitely piggyback off the confidence of her of her pricing for sure like there's no reason that you need to charge less um if you're not feeling confident um because of your nail like your nail skill then obviously that needs to be something that you work on like go and book yourself on so like my recommendation and i don't get any money for, like recommending this it's just the one that i've done and i think it's amazing is perfect polishing with sweet squared so that really got my skills up. And also by entering competitions, that also really got my confidence and my skill up. Like I was not naturally a good nail technician. Really, really wasn't. Like it didn't come naturally to me. I wasn't great at painting nails. Like I really had to work at it. Um, oh, Holly said shellac removal. Yeah, we include removal for free. Um, in We include it as part of our service when we've applied it and when we're reapplying it. And then otherwise we charge, um, well, five pounds if they are um five pounds if they are having it reapplied by us but it wasn't ours to begin with and the reason we charge so little we actually make a loss from that but it's to draw clients in because we have, if we're if it's like oh okay we need to allow like, like, half an hour and we charge 40 pounds an hour well, that's 20 pounds to remove your shellac chances are they're not going to come and have it with us and once we've got them in the door it's worth us losing that half an hour of time for five pounds to start with to gain a new client so think of the long-term value of each client as well um when it comes to removal so i hope that's been really helpful for everybody um like please like let me know how you get on with your spreadsheets um come and share it over in the nails and sales facebook group um which is um, well, all of you that are watching live will have it, but anyone that's watching over in YouTube is facebook.com forward slash nails, uh, forward slash groups, forward slash nails and sales. And you can um, come, please come and share like your findings from it. Like, are you making enough money? Are you like, oh my God, I need to put my prices up? Um, and let me know how you're getting on. And um, if anyone is interested in getting on the wait list for the Nail Business Success Club, we will be opening the doors again in July. Um, so this is our membership, and it's all about um, fast tracking you to get fully booked and having those five K months. Um, and we include like tons of like trainings, like loads and loads of like lives and motivation. And we have like Wednesday wins and inspiration and like Q and a sessions, which is sort of what I'm off to go and do now over in, in there. But thank you so much for joining me. Like, I absolutely love this and I hope everyone's found it really helpful and I will see you all soon. Bye.